All right, let's talk about potentiometers now. And I'm just going to give you a quick overview and try to get through this fairly quickly, just to show you how you can use Tinkercad to experiment with a potentiometer. If you want to know theory of operation and get a lot more in depth, see my video on potentiometer theory of operation that goes into much more detail. A potentiometer is basically a variable resistor. Let's look at one of the previous videos we did here. We had a nine volt battery, an LED, a resistor, and a push button. And when you push on the button, it activates the circuit. It allows current to flow and the LED lights up. Let's have a quick look at that because it will be relevant. If I click on this button, the LED lights up. And how bright the LED gets is somewhat dependent on the value of the resistor in series with it. And right now we've got a 1K ohm, a 1000 ohm resistor in series with the LED. We can change the value of that resistor, which will change the intensity of the LED because it will change the amount of current that flows through the circuit. If I change the resistance to, well, let's change it to 10K and push the button, you can see it's dimmer than it was a minute ago with only 1K. The point I'm trying to make is that we can change resistors to change the amount of current that goes through a circuit but we have to physically go through the resistor swapping process. We have to either take this resistor out and put another one in or add a resistor to this one, etc. So there comes the advantage of a variable resistor or a potentiometer. You can put this in place of a fixed resistor and you can do basically the same thing as swapping out this resistor, except it's much easier and much faster and it's got pretty much infinite variances from zero to full resistance where if we've got a 10k resistor in here, I can only go up to the next value of available resistors. So I might be able to, to do a 12k resistor, but I may not be able to do 10.2 kilo ohms, where with a variable resistor, I can get that minute of change. This picture of a potentiometer is pretty wimpy. Let's just go to Google and take a quick look at what potentiometers can really look like. So if I go to Google and search for a potentiometer and switch over to images here, we get to see quite a variety of types of potentiometers. So you can see there is quite a variety that you could choose from. So here's one that's kind of similar to the one in the Tinkercad drawing. And here's one that gives a pretty good indication of what's inside a potentiometer. You can see here are the three terminals, these three legs that stick out. The middle terminal is connected to something called a wiper. And you've got one big long resistor in here. And depending on how you turn the knob on the potentiometer, this wiper will be at say one end of the resistor, depending on which two leads you measure against. If your wiper is way down here, you either have minimal resistance or maximum resistance. And then if you rotate your wiper all the way over here, then you would have the opposite. And then you can place your wiper anywhere in between. So it makes it much more variable than trying to swap out fixed resistors. Back to our Tinkercad simulator. Let's exchange the potentiometer in our circuit instead of the resistor. So I am going to enlarge this a little bit and I'm going to pull my, my battery down to make some more room here. And I am going to remove the switch. So I'll click on that and press delete. And I'm going to remove the resistor. Click on that, hit delete. And I guess I didn't really need to move the battery. Let's put this about here. Polarity does not matter on a potentiometer as it does with an LED. So I'm going to connect the negative lead to the cathode of the LED, and then I'm going to connect the positive lead to one leg of the potentiometer. And then from the other leg of the potentiometer, I'm going to connect to the other leg of the LED. So now with any luck at all, this LED will light and I can vary the amount of brilliance of the LED based on where I rotate this wiper. So let's start the simulation. And we can see that we get the explosion mark here, meaning there's too much current going through. 
since we're getting 859 milliamps where the LED only should have 20 milliamps. So that's one of the beauties of working with a simulator is you can blow up your LED without any harm being actually done to any components. But let this be a forewarning is when you do put a potentiometer into a circuit, you typically don't want it to be at one end of the pot or the other. A safety valve might be to put a resistor here too in case you do put your pot to zero resistance. You won't burn out your components in the real world. You would still have a resistor in there for a bit of a safety valve to at least limit some current. But that's beyond the scope of this demonstration. So all we have to do is just move the wiper. I'm just going to click and hold and I'm just going to drag that up a little bit. And now you can see I'm no longer exploding the LED. I'm limiting the current enough where it lights up but it's not very brilliant. And let's rotate this around a little bit more and see what changes. This program is not very good at showing this change very well, but I can move it a little bit. There we go. A little bit brighter without blowing it up. And then if I pull it down to minimum resistance, then it's too much current. In this case where we're just using it as a variable resistor, we only need to use two legs of a potentiometer. And which two of the outside pins you use doesn't matter, but you always have to be connected to the inner one. So I could move this lead over here, and I could do the same thing. Then I could start the simulation. And now, when it was at minimum resistance with this pin relative to this pin, it allowed too much current and it burned out the LED. But now I'm using the other side of the continuous resistor in here. So right now this pin is at maximum resistance. So if I swing it around, if I go over here, then it'll start to light up and finally burn it out because now we're at minimum resistance relative to the right hand pin to the center pin. And remember the center pin is the wiper. That's the one connected here to this movable thing. And also know that we can change the resistance of this thing. If we change it to 100K and run the simulation now, we will get different amounts of brightness at the tail end here. This program doesn't do a great job of being able to show it. Let's zoom way in, see if I get a little bit more accurate spinning here. Can't do much better here. So this is not a great tool for just doing this, although Tinkercad can be a wonderful tool for doing more sophisticated simulations with your potentiometers. But again, beyond the scope of this lesson, let's get rid of these pins for now, or these uh, leads. And let's put an ohmmeter in here and let's look at what's going on as far as the resistance is concerned here. So right now I've got this thing set as a 100K potentiometer. So let's get a voltmeter or an ohmmeter out here multimeter and let's measure the resistance of this thing. So right now I've got this wiper pulled not quite all the way but there I pulled it all the way down so see we've got a 100k resistance right now. And then if I swap this outer lead I would have minimal resistance. So if I check that zero ohms of resistance. And so when I had my LED connected to these two terminals, that's when it blew up the LED because it allowed full current through the circuit, which was too much for the LED. So there's how you can measure the resistance from the wiper to either outside terminal. Now how about if we measure the resistance from both terminals on the outside like this? Let's run that and that's full resistance and it's leaving the wiper completely out of the picture. Let's switch back over to that view here. So if we put our right now the way I've got that multimeter, that ohmmeter, I've got it connected here and here. So the wiper is not involved in this at all. I'm only measuring all of this resistance when I'm connected to these two outer points. So here I'm re I'm reading all of this resistance when I'm connected across these two points. So that's 100K. Doesn't matter where this is because it's not connected at all when in this measurement. Okay, and if I change the value of this potentiometer to 500K and then start the simulation again, you can see now across the two outer terminals, it's the full resistance of the pot with the wiper not included in the measurements. And I'm about halfway, so if I take one side off and put it 
to the wiper. Now I am measuring the resistance from here down to here. And the wiper is set at about half. So this would be the knob on your this would be the knob on your potentiometer where you've got it centered. And so what we're doing is we're measuring this half of that internal resistor. And so half of 500K, pop quiz. Well, I guess they weren't ready for the pop quiz. I hope you are. Roughly half, 250 would be exactly half. If we move this around, we can see that we can head towards zero resistance across these two pins. And then if we go this way, we'll have full resistance. Okay, so that's using it as a variable resistor. What does this all mean if we're going to use it as a voltage divider? Well, go ahead and select the next video in this series to find out.